Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are in the world. Welcome to the Purpose Collective, to today's conversation about purpose with our guest host, Kevin Brown. Uh, great to see some familiar faces, also great to see some new faces. So if you've joined us before, you know the drill. Uh, use the chat, introduce yourself, tell us who you are. Tell us where you are in the world. And actually, today's question is, what is inspiring you at the moment? What is inspiring you at the moment? It could be a book. It could be a TV program. It could be the weather. It could be a project you're working on. It could be a person. Um, but what is inspiring you? And if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Welcome to the Purpose Collective. We hope to have a wonderful hour in store for you. Um, use the chat to introduce yourself, say who you are, say where you are in the world, and say what is inspiring you at the moment. So let's get into the chat and see what we've got and who we've got. Um, so we've got Mark from the Utrecht in the Netherlands. First time, welcome, Mark. It's a Bring friend of mine. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you here. Good to be here. <laughs> and so let's get these messages flowing. Let's see. And we've got new people joining. So let's see as we go. So as we get new people joining, tell us who you are, tell us where you are in the world today, and tell us what is inspiring you at the moment. Let's share it. Uh, with the group? Is it a book? Is it a program? Is it the weather? Is it a person? Is it a project that you're working on? But what is uh, what is lighting you up at the moment, to use one of Sarah's phrases? What's putting a spring in your step? Um, so let's have a look. So we've said good morning to Mark from the Utrecht, um, who's been inspired, currently producing video content as part of the team. Excellent. Uh, we've got Alberto, who's claiming to be in the Maldives. We know that you're in The Hague, Alberto, uh, but the Purpose Collective inspires you. That's good. Jane from Wiltshire, uh, inspired by people in general, uh, but also it's great to be getting out and about again. So welcome to Jane. We've got Pablo. Hi, Pablo in sunny London, uh, whose dog Chili is inspiring him uh, with her ability to live in the moment. Ah, excellent. We've got Tim in Derby, currently inspired by ultra trail runners. Uh, Tim has got his first ultra on the 27th. Wow. Good luck, Tim. <laughs> wow. Uh, you have to tell us how that goes. We've got Warren in Manchester. First time. Welcome, uh, Warren. Uh, you're in good hands, hopefully, for the next hour. Expecting your first child in June. Exciting. Many congratulations. Uh, it's inspiring and exciting view. And your video isn't working, no worries. We've got Victor in uh, Scott Bay. Uh, uh, sorry, Victor, I've mangled the pronunciation, but in Macedonia, welcome, Victor. Uh, we've got Tasha in Harrow, who's being inspired by Newfound Freedom, meeting with friends and family. Um, so welcome, Tasha. We've got Ashley in Eli, the concept of service to clients and how it can astonish is uh, inspiring, Ashley. Uh, we've got Ian in the West Mids, the Scrum Master, uh, uh, and inspired by the passion of a new starter who brings great energy. Uh, we've got Varsha, ex-colleague of mine. Hi, Varsha, how are you in London? Um, so ex-colleague of both mine and uh, Kevin's. Uh, finding purpose in personal and professional life is inspiring Varsha. So great to have you with us. We've got Angela in Essex, second time. Thank you for rejoining us, Angela. Uh, freeing and freedom of opening is inspiring. Uh, we've got Nicola in Newcastle, inspired by her friend Sam King, who's volunteering as a vaccinator. We've got Mary in Japan. Um, so Mary, welcome. Uh, I'm going to try and dust off some of my Japanese uh, to say, I was going to say Ohio gozaimasu, but it's not the morning, is it? It's the evening. So uh, uh, Genki, Mary. Genki desu ka. Uh, we've also got Jan in Shrewsbury, who's feeling inspired by the Alumni Relations Project, the first in, in Poland. Um, so Jacqueline in Stroud, uh, inspired by her dog, Molly, uh, who knows how to love without any conditions. We've got Sally in Bristol. So, so many people here. Um, 
We've got Chris in London. Uh, this is his first time. He's inspired by improving his 5K to run under 20 minutes. That's one of my uh, things that I've been working on as well at the moment, not succeeding. Um, but uh, let us know how that goes, Chris. So, so welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, we're just going to do a very quick intro of the Purpose Collective before we hand over to Kevin. So I'm going to hand over to Alberto to introduce himself and also to, to tell, to start the story of how the Purpose Collective formed. Hi, everyone. So I'm Alberto uh, from Spain, but based in the Netherlands, as many of you know already. Uh, for the new people, uh, so I'm one of the founders, co-founders of uh, the Purpose Collective, together with Chris and Sarah. And, um, you know, I just wanted to share a bit of our story uh, and then pass to, uh, to my colleagues here. Uh, but basically, um, about a year ago, a bit more than a year, year and a half ago, you know, I came across Chris on LinkedIn because he was posting some things about purpose. And I thought, you know, oh, sh shit, you know, this, this guy doing the same thing in the UK. <laughs> um, you know, we kind of launch our businesses at the same time. And then we, you know, we watch um, each other's content and we came across that. And then at some point we connected, had a com nice conversation and, and then we had good synergy, right? And then from that moment, we kept in touch and uh, at some point we say, hey, you know, why we don't organize a workshop um, in London, you know, in the UK? I just wanted to be some, you know, there to see some of my friends. Um, and it was uh, like a good idea. So then I, I contacted Chris and we were working on that. And then I think he at some point met Sarah as well. Chris? Yeah. And so, so I, uh, a friend of mine uh, said, have you heard of a lady called Sarah Rosen Tula? So she's got a book called Powered by Purpose. And I was like, ah, that's such a great title. Somebody's <laughs> already got it. Uh, but I got in touch with Sarah and, um, and we arranged to meet for a coffee in London. This is, I think, February last year. And so Sarah and I have actually met in person for 30 minutes. Uh, it was very brief coffee. Uh, it was just behind Borough Market, for those of you that know uh, London. Uh, and so we'd met, uh, and then Alberto and I were having this conversation about an event in June, and we said, well, we think it probably worked better if there's three of us. Um, and so we, uh, I, I approached Sarah and said, that I've got a friend, Alberto, we're thinking of doing something on purpose, would you like to join us? Uh, and then we started to have a conversation about doing an event, and we got as far as having a date, having a venue in London in April 2020, um, and we had a meeting in the diary to sort of plan it um, in sort of mid-March. And then obviously coronavirus kind of had hit the world. And, and, you know, in the UK, we went into lockdown. In Netherlands, we went into lockdown. But we had our meeting in the diary. So we kept the meeting. Uh, and we said, well, obviously, we can't do the event. Um, and at this point, I'm going to bring Sarah in uh, to tell the rest of the story of the Purpose Collective and how, how we came together, how we found our purpose. Oh, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Alberto. Hello, everybody. A very warm welcome. So just briefly, um, the what was intended to be an in-person event became an online event. We were amazed with the response we got right from the get-go. Um, just a real buzz, people wanting to talk about purpose, meet with like-minded people. Um, at some point early on, we put a video together, filmed in separate locations, stitched it together, that drew in more people. And here we are, um, about a year later. I think Alberto might actually have the overall figure of how many people have come to sessions. Um, and at some point last summer, we gave ourselves the name The Purpose Collective came up with our three circle logo for individual team and organizational purpose. And we cover that range in our different sessions. So enough from me, I'm just gonna go back to Alberto. Maybe Alberto, you could give us that, the number overall. Yeah, so uh, so far we, we did like 30, 31 events in total. Uh, and we had 2000, more than 2,300 people registered so far. So, which is amazing. And many of you are here many times to many sessions. Some people are new and, you know, uh, but they, we always have a, 
great atmosphere and uh, you know people purposeful leaders in these calls and we really appreciate um, you know, all of you joining this session. Uh, today we have our guest host Kevin uh, Kevin Brown he's there and you know from this point he's gonna you know kind of take over the session but I just wanted to introduce him uh, or, or you know to ask him a couple of questions. Um, we ask the audience, uh, Kevin, what inspires you at the moment? Um, I will ask the same thing to you. What inspires you at the moment, Kevin? Um, well, thanks, Alberto, and uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be asked to, to guest host. What's inspiring me for everyone uh, on the call? I'm in Saudi Arabia at the moment, um, uh, an amazing country that's evolving you know, incredibly fast. And I'm having the opportunity at the moment to build a, a brand new team whose job is to enable 25,000 young Saudi to connect with careers and purpose. So it's a, it's a really energizing time because I'm, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm of the old world um, and these are all very young because 70% of the population in Saudi is under 30. So I feel really energized being around people learning and beginning their journey and, and to be part of that change. Nice, thank you very much. And then the last question is, who is your purpose superhero? Okay. Now I'm going to I'm going to follow a previous history where no one ever says one. So I'm gonna, if I I would like to have two. Um, my first uh, purpose of it is, was my mother, um, and I maybe only realised this a lot later in my life. Um, she she my father was in the forces. He travelled a lot, and she gave up everything that mattered to her personally to ensure that me and my sister had a, a fulfilling, well brought up experience. Um, and I recall now just how much she did give up along the way. So I admire her purpose for focusing on her family. And my, my worldly superhero is Nelson Mandela, um, just because of everything that he stood for in creating connections and humanity, despite all of the things that could have stopped him. So uh, he's inspired me for my whole life. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Kevin. And it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I always find this kind of interesting challenge, and as all the faces popped up, uh, I noticed some some names from from my past because my past uh, career is is forty years of uh, work across um, a sector that's about enabling potential for people. And I noticed Varsha was on the call. I've not seen for years, and Pablo and Beth Carruthers. So. I hope what I say reflects with their experiences of time with me. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, what I want to do today is I, 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 I'm intrigued by purpose, frankly, and I'm intrigued by the group here. Um, you know, what drives us and how do we continue to be purposeful through our lives? You know, my journey started 40 years ago um, and, you know, I was reflecting, you know, is purpose like a good wine in one way? So uh, does it... Does it mature well at age? And uh, for me personally, and maybe this is a good thing for those who've got a lot more years ahead of them, um, I feel more purposeful than ever before. I feel I can connect more than ever before, and I relish every opportunity to do that. So, um, you know, I'm gonna share some personal experience of mine, how my purpose spark was ignited. Uh, I'm intrigued to find out more about yours in the questions that I'm gonna ask you. But I'm also going to ask you to help me with the biggest piece of consultancy, free consultancy that I've ever had to help me with my work in Saudi Arabia. So uh, I apologize for, for that, but uh, I love to hear views and opinions. Um, so if I could just share my screen to start with. Okay, I hope you can all see that. Okay, yeah, all right. So one of the things when I became connected with the Purpose Collective, just as context to today was, you know, I wanted to understand how we could have an impact. You know, I use the phrase, the power of the team. Um, and one of the things as you go through life and purpose, I wonder, do we lose it? Do we become mellow as a result of it or how do we sustain that? And I will talk about a business that um, went through that transition um, 10 years ago with me. But for the, for the group here, part of, of today, I'd like you to reflect on a number of things. You know, how do you really ensure we connect more people with purpose rather than focus on our own? Sometimes we're comfortable, I found in my experience, 
doing what we like to do and where we feel we're adding value. But we truly use the opportunity to connect as I have that opportunity to do that now in, in Saudi Arabia at this very point in time. How do we maintain that? And how do we ensure that not we just maintain it, but whoever we work with and whoever we touch maintains that? And part of that for me is about, about habits and structures and skills that I'll touch upon in my presentation. And lastly, how could we do more? I always believe we can do more. And I think we could do things differently. And every time I've left a purpose collective session, I have tried to do something differently. And I would challenge all of you at the end of this session to take away whatever learning we have from the groups or from this, this discussion. What would you do differently tomorrow is all I'm interested in because I believe that if we're really gonna be purposeful, the power of the team is to unite and to do the things um, that we're trying to do and do something different tomorrow. My, my, my mother who I, I referenced used to say to me, if you always do what you did, you'll always get what you got. And I truly kind of believe in that. I think the other context for me in being here is, I love the insightful conversations with uh, the people that are uh, on this call and others before. And a few months ago, I was really, really taken by Kalila from True Colors. And one of the things that she focused on very powerfully um, was the power of conversation in making people think differently and operate differently. And that made me resonate with my past and those conversations that had helped me to begin my journey and sustain my journey that I would like to uh, talk about today. So what I will do is I will ask you about where your purpose came from. I'm now going to share a little bit about my purpose. But before I, before I do that, I just want to do one thing with Alberta because he, he always asks questions. Um, I'm in Saudi Arabia and I, I always think we should, you know, uh, engage with the culture and the experience we're having. So just to start the conversation, I'm going to say to you, Alberto, because you, you obviously, you live in, 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 in Holland and you come from Spain. We should start this conversation this morning with me saying to you, um, Ale, uh, Salam Aleikum. And your response to me, just to test your language skills, is to say, Aleikum Salam. So please. Alikum salam. <laughs> Alikum salam. Very good. I'm then going to say to you, kapalak, and that means how are you? So, you, so your response to that is to say, alhamdulillah. Uh, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Very good. Okay. And that means, that means praise to God in the sense of how they embrace change and culture here, and we need to respect that. So um, I always try and learn some of the languages that go along the way. So I'm going to test you next time we get on the conversation with those same phrases and see if you remember. You've recorded it so you know. I'll do okay. the same in Spanish with you. Uh... <laughs> okay. How did it begin for me? How did it begin for me? You know, here, here is me literally, and you know, you can smile. This is me 50 years ago, literally 50 years ago. Um, and I had, a, I had a purpose in my life that was very clear to me. I will be a professional footballer. And this may chime with you, Alberto, from a conversation I had with you before. And I'm going to score the winning goal in the FA Cup final. Nothing was going to ever stop me to do that. And that's all I wanted to do um, as I grew up. And by the way, this is my first leadership role here. I am captain of the football team. So I began to un understand the concept of leadership. Um, and that's all I, all I actually wanted to do. And I had a great opportunity to do that. Uh, my, my success in football offered me a contract. I had a contract uh, that was offered me as a young apprenticeship, which uh, was with a top professional club, which was exciting. Um, but my father, and I remember you shared this, Alberto, my father said, no, he said, you must finish your education. You must complete your education and give yourself more choices, um, which is exactly what I did because I needed to do that. That then led to some changes for me in that the football didn't progress in the way that it did and I became engaged with sport. And I love sport. And I secured a place subject to results to go to Loughborough University, which was the top sporting university at the time. Um, and I was excited about that. But unfortunately, at the end of the exam period, I didn't get the grades that I needed to do that. Um, and there was some pain in that. And when we talked about Khalila's presentation, she talked about our life being shaped by pain points by past experiences and obviously by the passion of things we had. So my passion at that time was slightly taken away from me in that I wasn't going to do sport, I wasn't going to do football. Um, 
and I ended up joining the civil service um, in a development program. And I was lost, if I'm truthful about it at that point. I didn't really know what impact I was going to make. And I didn't know what my opportunities um, as I moved forward. Um, and I found it difficult to navigate um, without that sense of purpose, which I had so clearly, and had also been founded by working in teams and working with good coaches. And those were the conversations that had made me believe where I could be. Um, but I was fortunate. And this is the circumstance that ignited my spark. Um, I was taken out to a so social deprivation area. And in life, we don't always know what we don't know. And I went to somewhere that was a very challenging place. As, as, as we drove around in the car, I witnessed significant deprivation for the first time in my life. And I saw young children who were just wandering the streets. And I saw people who were using drugs. Um, and nothing was happening for them or seemed to be which is something I had never experienced. And we ended up in a community centre um, and, and we had the opportunity to talk to people and the power of conversations are really interesting. And I spoke to many people in the community centre about why they were where they were. What, would, what were their hopes and their dreams and aspirations if we, as a, as a society, were going to help them? I work for the government. Most of the people had no clear purpose. Their purpose was to survive. All they wanted to do was survive and they wanted to secure funds to survive. How do I get more money to survive? Nothing about how they could use their skills or experiences or achieve something more purposeful in society. And I had a number of those conversations and then I met a guy called Paul. Um, and Paul was different. And when I asked him the same questions that I had asked the other people, his answer was a very different answer for me. And his answer was, look, I am not working. I have never worked. I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm not unemployable. I just want somebody to give me a chance and I'll show you that I can be a success. And I was really astounded by that from the conversations that I'd had before because he believed he could do something different. His circumstances had been very challenging all his life, but he had purpose. His purpose was, I want to make a contribution. And I felt really uncomfortable about it all because it was a profound moment for me. I'd been moaning about my situation. I wasn't going to do sport. I wasn't going to get the opportunity anymore. And here was a guy who had nothing of the opportunity I had. And I felt the need to make a difference. But how could I make that difference was the first challenge for me. And on the way back to the office, I reflected and thought about this. And I ended up going back to the office and I began a series of conversations with the people that were in my office about his situation. What can we do about this situation? And what was interesting, their response was, there's a lot of Pauls in the world. We don't have time, it's not our priorities. Um, and, you know, there isn't much you could do. And I found that a very difficult thing to deal with. So I challenged those conversations to say, but what could we do? And would you prepare to come out and see what I saw? And one of the reasons I did that is what changed in me is because I saw something that I had not seen before, or I didn't recognize, and I recognized that this needed to change. I took the group with me. They came with me, and we went back to the office, and the conversations changed. The Seeing is Believing piece, which was a program that later in my career became something that the Prince's Trust used to do, was a powerful change about igniting purpose, understanding the real situation, and the conversations that they had then had made a difference to them. And that was a very powerful moment in terms of igniting my purpose. Those conversations in the office then led to, what skills do we have? Without all of the systems and methods, what are we prepared to do together as a team? And those conversations led to, can we try something together? And we agreed as a group that we would go and spend some volunteer time as outreach people in the community and engage in more conversations and try and create some more solutions along the way. We had no resources. We just had a desire to make a difference. And when we started to do that, the mantra or the statement about why we were doing it was, let's get Paul a job. It became a simple focus about, if we can get Paul a job, we can get other Pauls a job. And we did it. We worked together and we had conversations and this didn't happen overnight. 
And we kept re repeating those conversations to other people. And those other people started to listen. And we were successful in getting Paul a job. Paul got a job as a work placement. Through that work placement, they liked him, they hired him. And a year later, Paul actually got a, uh, a team leader role, I remember. And it was a printed circuit board assembly operation, you know, something that may not sound exciting, but for Paul, it was a, a material change. And his conversations, I remember when I used to follow how he was doing over the months, his conversations with his family changed and they connected with purpose and opportunity and change. And what I realized as a collective team, as I had in sport, that if you put the right things together, then you will make a difference. And I just want to focus on the conversations for a minute because we take them for granted, I think. And one of the things in conversations for me is the conversations were about what mattered to explore, not to explain. We want to justify too many times. Just the conversation of exploring can lead to many opportunities along the way. Seeing the reality of the connection and being part of the connection makes us more purposeful in my view and in my experience. Those people would not have done anything, in my view, if they had not gone and seen what was going on and understood the real requirement as to why you could have an impact. We were all working for the government. We should have a purpose that was about enabling change, improving society, increasing uh, the opportunity for people. You have to change habits and routines at the beginning if you're trying to get people to come on this journey. I often heard we were too busy. So people gave up the things that they were too busy with and, and reformed habits to give time that they didn't have time for before because it became much more a purposeful agenda for us. We also didn't succeed from the beginning. We were prepared to fail and we did fail and we didn't always do the right things. But one thing we believed in is that the change could happen and we constantly held on to that to say, there must be a way. And I think if you can embed that ideology in, in people, and you can then make it happen, it spirals into something better. The success of this program is it actually became a funded outreach just for that location. The conversations led to more conversations and it became an outreach program for the district that I worked in at the end of the day. And it was a kind of powerful thing saying to me, as a team, you can keep making a difference. And some of the things that really mattered, and I would share with you if you have, if you're doing this or you want to do it going forward, is you need to you need to visualize that future state one of the most powerful things that people held on to was a, vi a vision of paul going to work you know a vision of how paul and that community could change as a result of what you could do one of the important things we always asked ourselves was what happens if i don't do this and that really is a kind of you know a self-reflective process that says you don't want that to happen because the consequence the consequence is someone who's stuck without an opportunity. So that became a power of, of, of what drove this team together. The thing I learned most, and I learned this as a young footballer, when the coaches talked to me, focus on the power of the team. You can't do this alone. If we are really gonna have the impact, and I'll talk about this in the business world in the second half of the presentation, focus on the power of the team. You have to make a personal commitment, whether it's time, whether it's, you know, changing the way that you think and operate and allowing others to take control. I truly believe purpose comes with you making a personal commitment in a different way than you do. I've only seen purpose work if you are realistic and you accept that you need to do small steps. The first step was just getting the team to go and visit what was happening so I could change their view and see the world in a different way. The second step was to change the type of conversation from why we can't to why we can. And those, those things that Kalila talked about in creating communication, connection, community are all powerful drivers that worked for me. We accepted that we would fail and that was a potential outcome and we would make mistakes, but every time it didn't work, we looked for a different way of getting around that and we had a conversation together and we found different avenues to explore, which created the opportunity. And one of the things that I continue to do, and it came from this, I ask that you reflect every day on what went well and what you could do better. And we used to do that every day and saying, have we moved this one inch forward, one foot forward? What was the one good news story we got on the journey to change for that community outreach solution that we were trying to build? 
And that kept us engaged and it kept the team committed. And every day we took away a great story or a moment and we shared that with other people. It, we made it real in the sense of we are making progress. It was not a quick journey. What that established for me in the team that I worked for at that time, and this was a small team in a big, big team, not, you know, in the future, I've managed to be the CEO of a business, which I'll talk about. Here was a small team within a big government opportunity. The story was, even with that level, you can be purposeful and make a change. And that's the conversation I'm now having with the team that I'm working with in Saudi Arabia. So those are the kind of things that started me. And I'm interested to know what, what ignited your spark. I believe it's important to reflect and remind ourselves where our purpose journey began. I think we have run the risk at times of taking purpose for granted because it's what we do. And if we do that, we will never extend the capability and capacity that we have. So what I wanted to do in the first session, because I'm really interested in this more than my own personal journey is, can you share where your purpose spark came from? For me, it was a bit of a spark, a eureka moment of seeing something that was new and made me realize there was more to football and there was more to my own purpose, but there was also a team dynamic that I loved and I could do something in teams and that would allow me to make a bigger difference. So why did that moment or that experience of that conversation have that impact as it did and how has that helped you? So please spend some time in the group sharing that and I'm really excited to hear what you've got to say about that. Okay, so, oh, sorry, Kevin, I was going to say, we're going to be in, in groups of three or four, um, so, so apologies, I stuck it in there. But the, the rooms are ready to open as soon as you, you, you give the word. Okay, now would be a good time. So I think, you know, I will, I will talk about how this is built into something that's a bigger kind of approach for me uh, and worked inside a big company. Um, but this is about us for now, and I'm, I'm really keen to hear what you've got to say. Cool. So we've got 10 minutes. I'm opening the rooms. You'll get an invite pops up. Uh, have great conversations and we shall see you back in 10 minutes. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I check that we've got Kevin with yep. us. I'm back. Yep. Okay, Kevin. So we're, we're on 10.42. So we've got 18 minutes left in the session. So I'll hand quickly back over to you uh, for the second part of your session. Okay. Thank you. Okay, All right. Um, uh, thank you to the to the to the to the to the to the, to the, to the group in the, in the session. Um, I'm going to ask us just to move on and do the second part of the presentation, um, and then we can ask some questions at the end. And I'm going to try and get through this because I I love the conversation that I just had in my group about um, where people found it or didn't find it, and how they might find it in a slightly different way because I think that's really important. But I want to take this to a kind of business context. Um, as I share the screen again. Okay. This, this is one of my favorite quotes in my, in, in my life and something that I've used to help create a purposeful business on a number of occasions. And the quote is, great work is done by those who are not afraid to be great. And I share that in a more, more broad way is that, you know, greatness is not about finding the, you know, the cure for cancer or the most innovative product in the world. Greatness is an internalized mechanism for me that says, if what you do feels great, then you will do great work. Um, and you shouldn't be afraid of that. And you shouldn't be afraid of the failure in it. Um, I found myself in 2011 um, in Saudi Arabia for the very first time where I am now, um, where the government was asking uh, the company I work for to establish something that the kingdom had never done before uh, in 12 weeks to build something that would put significant numbers of people who didn't want to work, had no purpose in their life, were in a very comfortable world in Saudi Arabia, um, had high education levels and, and connect them with the world of work and, and more purposeful contribution to society. And we had 12 weeks to find 150 Saudis and build the businesses um, and, and, and make that change. And this was the quote that I used to connect them with why we were gonna do what we were gonna do. And from the, the work that I've done before when I was looking at how purpose had, had, had matured and worked through my life, there were five S's that I've talked about, um, which I'm gonna cover. And the five, the five S's that make a business become successful from my experience, and I've done this 
you know, more than once with the teams are these five things which I'll cover, which are about selection of people, about having a statement for where your business um, is going to go and what it, what it means. I think you need to see and show, uh, and I'll talk more about that. You need to share, and sharing is a much broader, you know, um, approach than just, you know, sharing information, and I'll talk about it. And lastly, I think you need to shout about it um, if you're going to be successful. Um, and I'll touch on sustainability at the at the end of this. Okay. So, sorry, I'm going to go back one. Sorry. The selection when I came to the kingdom, we needed 550 people. And all the Saudi world that I met at that time were interested in, um, I wanna work for a blue chip company, you know, I want to have a high, a high paid job and I wanna be a manager. Um, nobody ever talked about why they would do what they would do. The why just didn't exist in, in, in any shape or form to my experience. And the company I worked for, which is a company that Chris used to work for as well, um, decided, we would need to have a conversation. We wanted to put purpose at the front of this. The why became the most powerful thing. And Saudi's higher on education levels. Every company hires on the education. If you've got a good degree, they're gonna hire you. They never looked at the kind of, you know, why you wanna do it, the skills, capabilities. So the selection process became that conversation that I talked about before. So we invited people to talk about why they wanted to work for the company. And literally thousands of people applied for the job because we were an international company in partnership with Deloitte. The selection process itself was built on conversations. Present to me how you would have a conversation with a Saudi job seeker who wants to change, who doesn't want to change, who doesn't want to work in the private sector, is very comfortable with their life. How do you create those purposeful conversations? The questions in the interview process were all about why. Why do you want to be here? Not just because you want a different opportunity. And we challenged everybody to really, really engage with purpose. And the reason why that selection was that way is the ones that we were going to select would already recognize that from what we did with them. So I think selection is a really important thing in building a purposeful business. And it doesn't happen enough for me in really investing in that selection process. So the first set of messages orientate you to where you're going to go. The second thing was about ownership transfer. And one of the things that we wanted to do is say, well, why are you here? The company had a mission and a vision. And what we did is we spent a lot of time talking to them and saying is, what would you want to put on the message? You can choose. We wanted to create them to have a conversation. So we gave them, we gave them a competition. Anybody We lost Kevin. Yeah, I think he's having some internet issues. Well, Kevin, you're back with us. We just lost you for about 30 seconds. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry. So the, the conversation, sorry, but what I was trying to say is we gave ownership to what the company stood for, the message that they wanted to put above the door. And we did that so that they would have conversations with each other and really learn about what mattered to each other. Because purpose is about the team, it's not about you. There are different things that we all want, but that connected purposes. So we began that conversation. So this first step, and this was the words that they came up with. It, in Arabic, it's different, but it was, we want to stand for enabling human potential. Powerful words, and that went above the door in all of the offices that we have. And that was so that every morning when you walked in, you knew what you were gonna do. It was a fantastic message. Every client who came in knew what they were going to happen in that. And the conversation that was formed, the very first thing, it was framed around, why am I coming in here? And those job seekers connected with that very quickly because of what they're going to do. So I believe the statement is a really important and powerful thing that you need to do. The next, create the environment inside. The environment matters. And the staff decided this is how it needed to look inside. And they create this great imagery, which was, which was incredible because of what they were doing. And the write your own story was a write your own story for you and a write your own story for the people that are in the business. They connected with the vision and the mission of the kingdom because it was a powerful connection. So what they could now do is they could see that every day. It reminded them of what they were doing. 
we encouraged and we gave ownership and time, no discipline to this, to go and talk about what you do. Any time of the day, you can sit down during the week and we want you, as you can see in this picture, to share, to show. So they sit down and they share the success stories, why it mattered to the Pauls of this world that I talked about before. The tree that you can see there has leaves on it, which are real uh, paper leaves, and they wrote these messages. The people, the customers they work with captured these messages about what they were doing, the why became a, a, a virtual experience every day. I want to put a leaf on the tree, the client wanted to put a leaf on the tree. A really powerful way of showing and sharing that means purpose isn't something that's thinking about, it's real to you every day and that's how it becomes embedded and sustained. The last thing is, sorry, I'll jump on. We had the fifth one, which is on there, which I will go to, is shout. We celebrated this and they had a very, very interesting way of doing it. We gave them the opportunity to say, how do you promote what you're doing every day to everybody else? And we had, they had a bell. Some people had a bell. Every time someone was successful, they rang a bell. Sometimes they had a klaxon. Sometimes they just had a big round of applause. And the power of purpose for me was not the bell. The bell was the message that made people realize they were succeeding. But the most powerful thing it did is it did it for the, for the job seekers in our case that they were working with who said, what's that bell for? What's that noise for? And they could tell the story of somebody like them had made that transition and found purpose. And they wanted to be the next to ring the bell or have their story told about them. And sustainability and purpose for me is to continue the journey yourself. So in this model, what, what we did is they had ownership of what they did. The team decided on the future changes. They decided content messages. They decided how they would promote this community and family. And the one thing that the company did that they asked for that was it is they made a commitment to the community that they were choosing. So there was a share of the profits that they chose where to go. So I truly believe a powerful, purposeful business begins with that selection and works its way through with the way that you set statements and you see. And they're not one-off things. They happen every day and they're a powerful thing that you need to do every day. So, sorry, I know we're running short of time, but, you know, if you don't embrace the whole ecosystem, I don't think we'll ever achieve the same levels of purpose that we can. And this team became the best in class for year after year after year, not because of the leadership, because they owned the journey of purpose and it was with them every day and it mattered every day. Okay, so into groups quickly to Chris, I'm sorry, I've got a very short time. Can you still do this or not? Or do you want yeah, to? Yeah, I think we, we, we could do five, five minutes. Okay, five quick, minutes. Quick five minutes my project is to have an impact on purpose, and it's much easier when you're doing physical work. I would like you to quickly share any powerful conversations or approaches that you've had and how you could do that in a digital world, because this has to be digital for me. So we're having to have digital conversations, the world has changed. So I'm really, really interested in how you might develop or have developed powerful conversations digitally. Okay, so we're down to four minutes, but I'm opening the rooms now and we shall be back at uh, 10.58. Welcome back, everybody. We're conscious of time being very tight. Um, Kevin posed a question that's really interested in the feedback. So if we could ask you to use the chat and just drop into the chat what your discussion was uh, and how you, uh, I guess, what you came up in, in response to, to Kevin's question. And Kevin as well, I think, because this is something that you're interested in, we have the Purpose Collective LinkedIn group and maybe Kevin, if you could do a, a post in there and pose the question again, and then people also have the opportunity to, to engage there. Yeah, happy to do that. Um, okay. In the, in uh, the meantime, and very quickly, maybe I can, I, I'm going to take my usual screenshots, right? Uh, two of them, because I have two screens. You need to s express how you feel about the session, right? Um, count until three, one, two, three. That's one, thank you. And the second one, um, yeah, one, two, three. Well, oh, thank you. Right, Do thank we have time for a question? Mm. I'm really mindful of the time. So I was just gonna start to wrap us up here. I know some people would already need to go. Kevin, a huge thank you to you for all the inspiration that you've brought. For that reminder, 
about the, the role the conversation plays in igniting the purpose spark and sustaining it. Thanks for sharing with us your dreams of being a professional footballer, the disappointment it didn't happen and how you've really worked that into the fine work that you're doing with young people out in Saudi Arabia. So thank you very much. I'm going to do a very quick shout out for our next two events. Uh, 17th of June, another one hour session with Alberto, uh, Purpose as a Team Sport. And on the 18th of June, we're running a longer session, half day on um, Team Purpose Masterclass. Alberto, do you just want to close us off here with a sentence or two about the next session? Uh, yeah, so thank you everyone. And uh, I hope to see as many uh, of you as possible. Uh, I'll try to practice my uh, Arabic uh, skills, uh, Kevin, uh, for my session. And yeah, it will be, we will talk about, you know, uh, the link between sports and, and especially team sports and actually the professional world. Um, you know, with a bit of my experience uh, and, and Kevin and I had a lot of, uh, you know, um, similar things in our uh, uh, dreams about being a professional football player, but also a couple of uh, inspiration I got from uh, other sports and other teams uh, that helped me um, during my career and, and, you know, to do the work I do with teams as, at companies as well. So looking forward to see you all there. Thank you very much for joining and have a lovely and purposeful day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you.